Okay. As can see I, I made a new video and I'm about to upload it today uh, I see I'm about to upload it today and so I was running at the beginning but you guys are always used to seeing this one I know all right it's a couple minutes so we're gonna start the show um, yeah pass the plate will I, I, I appreciate that um, all right so hopefully it looks like my mic is working uh, the callers are working. The oh yeah, Justin, I am. I am. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, finishing those last two Bushmaster episodes too. They're long overdue. Um. How about making the economy T-shirts with the flag on the back of the grow book that's not bad oh my god five eight seven five eight seven you're on with the grow boss hey how's it going grow boss good morning you've been uh, calling all morning so i thought uh, i'd start the show with you what can i do for you awesome i get uh just got one quick question man i've been watching your videos for the past couple of months now and and uh gained a lot of gained a lot of info from you guys and well from you uh but uh, I have one issue. I have a 5x10 tent. I have a sealed garden. I have a Danby 2-duct uh, AC inside the tent. And basically, uh, I'm running the tent with nothing in it right now, just trying to get my temperatures and everything set. My problem is, is the tent is vacuuming in on itself. The 2-pipe duct um, AC... Uh, I hear. I heard you say in a few videos past that it recycles the air just inside the tent, but something's going on where I'm extinguishing more air than that thing's pulling in. It's a completely sealed tent. I have my, uh, I have my, uh, my, uh, my fan hooked to my can filter outside the tent, running through one of the holes through both of my thousand watt lights out the other side and vented. Uh, outside in the outside the house. Okay, I think I got you on this one. And so it just keeps, and it just 
and it just keeps sucking in on itself. And I don't want to run CO2 and spend a grand just to have it go to the, go to the tank. Right? So the only thing that I can offer you is this, and you're going to see it come across your screen in a sec here. Uh, let me let me build your okay. garden. I'm building your garden here on uh, on paint. So you've got uh, you've got fan filter. I'm just trying. I'm trying to get the video. I'm trying to get the video to catch up for me so I can watch what's going on here. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. It's uh, I got you. It'll come through in a sec. It takes me a sec to build it anyway. Okay, yeah. so. I'm, I'm just going to draw what you have. And uh, that way, um, this is, because you I, I know what you're talking about, and I can tell you that not every AC is constructed as well as every other AC, but you actually have two components going on here. You actually have uh, an AC inside the tent with two yeah. with two ducks uh, coming out the back. So yeah, okay, I'm with you. I think I got you on this one. Okay, AC. What What are the lights? Uh, two thousand watt uh, cool tubes. Um, is it two individual cool uh, tubes? HPS, sorry, H HPS. Okay, yeah. so are they in yeah, cool tubes individual. though? They're thousand watts in cool tubes. They're two individual cool tubes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so I believe. I, go on. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I thought for a little bit there that maybe my ducting wasn't sealed properly around those steel tubes and it was actually pulling a vacuum through there. But that would just be that would be way too much of a, of, a, of a leak that I wouldn't notice. You know what I mean? Like to, to extinguish that tent, the minute I turn that thing on, as soon as, put it this way, when the AC is not running, I have it set so that it runs the fan on the AC constant, but um, as soon as the AC kicks in to start cooling, that's when the tent sucks in on itself. You don't have a C. Okay, so I spent. <laughs> okay, so I drew a. I drew this picture for you, because the whole thing I was leading up to was you're going to have to inspect the individual seals like here 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 because the only other thing that i can really offer you in terms of this is you will have to take uh, uh like a cigarette or uh or uh the incense and you'll literally have to light something yeah. with a little bit of smoke and you'll have to have somebody inside the tent to see if you smell it in the exhaust but I, I got to tell you, if the AC is uh, leaking, then it will be clearly obvious because, like, uh, this AC. I uh, can't see it. So I got an AC just a little further over to the side. I, we just, I, I understand the concern. The concern is, where is the negative pressure coming from? So if you don't yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, and. and you know, it's funny that I, I don't listen to everybody online, but the minute I started searching how the airflow actually runs through that particular AC and all this, everybody came back saying, hey, your tent's vacuuming in on itself? That's great. That's exactly what you want. I'm thinking, Man, that's crazy. Like, <laughs> I right. never, you know, I never seen nothing like that before. But. Right there, I'll, I'll, I say it on every show, I say it all the time, most of the failures come from improper use of the equipment. For instance, um, somebody will try to put an exhaust fan, like, uh, like uh, somebody will try to put it like an exhaust fan over here. They say like, so this will blow air out and this will push the air in. 
But absolutely not. You can't push any air out unless you suck air in, and you can't suck any air in unless it blows out. It's a net zero effect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So you're sure the lights don't leak then, right? You're sure they don't leak either way because remember, you're blowing air through the lights, which means you're going to create a venturi effect that sucks air into the hood. And when you run like an incense or something like that, there's no, or you get a little spray bottle with some water and you spray on it, you're okay. Don't do that because uh, it'll get on the light. But yeah. it works for a car. Oh, lot, just, but, uh, just, I don't know if it helps. Sorry, I don't know if it helped, but I'm actually blowing through the lights. I don't know if I told you if I was sucking out of them or blowing into them. Do you see the picture that I put up? Yeah, that's identical to what I have set up right there. I, so that's all I'm seeing though right now is just your AC, your your fan outside the tent, the two lights. So it hasn't caught up quite yet. If you have any more there. Oh no, that's it. This is the picture. You're just blowing through it. I, I got you on this. Um, it's your AC. It, it has to be, unless there's something that I'm missing in this That's picture, it has to be the AC. Now, when you look at the back of these ACs, you'll see that they yeah. sort of like, they sort of, they sort of like section their own little thing off. You may be able to run a little bead of silicon or silica around the edge or something like that. You may be able to find the leak. Yeah. But my observation is a 5 by 10 tent is 350 cubic feet. For you to suck the air out of that tent till the walls come in, I, how quick does it happen? So you, the, the, you turn on the uh, AC and the walls come in. It won't happen out. until the AC, as soon as the AC kicks into its cooling mode, it will suck in within... 10 seconds. Okay, so there's there's actually there's actually two fans that do this. There's one fan that's in here, and this fan sucks room air in and blows it back. And then there's another fan for the motor compartment. So you can tell that the fan for your motor compartment is the one that's doing it. So you'll have to find that leak. Yeah. Uh, it, it's unfortunate, and you may not be. I will tell you that those fans, these little fans, they are so amazing. When you open them up, you can't believe how much technology they squeeze into those little oh, R2-D2 units. I mean, they got a radiator, a compressor. They've got all sorts of stuff. The heat exchanger, the pumps, two fans. It is an amazing piece yeah. of technology. So... Um, this is... I'm almost wondering if I'm better off waste my time searching or should I just say the hell and scrap the damn thing. I bought it used. I mean, it's in great shape. But obviously there's there's something going on with it. It's not working the way that it should because it should not be evacuating that tent that fast, right? Right. Absolutely right. So unless there's an obstruction somewhere and it's pulling air from somewhere else. I mean, that's 350 cubic feet. I mean, in 10 seconds, that's 1,800 cubic feet a minute. I mean, that'll suck the walls in. That's, yeah. I mean, that's a 14-inch fan. So that's, you got a lot going yeah, on. And, um, you really, you could I was even, almost wondering, after watching, sorry. Go, go ahead, on. Sorry. Go on. Uh, I was almost wondering, is, do you think my 2,000 watts, I mean, I've always had decent success. I've, I've never, I've always kept with the KISS rule. And uh, done exactly, it's funny, but uh, a lot of what you say about, you know, too many nutrients, too much light, um, you know, and, and not enough CalMag is, seems to be your biggest issues with a lot of these plants. And I can tell you from my last grow, um, I was miniaturizing the tops. Obviously, the lights were, they weren't too, the heat wasn't too high, but it was obviously too much light. And after watching your videos, I started being, you know, the characteristic in my grow from past, from past grows, right? So, you know, I, I was almost wondering, do you think in a 5 by 10 tent, if I throw, I'm doing a scrog system, the lights are two and a half feet above the canopy, but do you think I'd benefit more from two 600s in that smaller tent? Like, I don't find a 5 by 10 tent very big, and I was wondering if, 
you know, 2,000 waters going in there is just too much, too much light. Uh, no, I would definitely say that your light is too close, but I'd also like to take a moment and educate you. Two and a half you. feet, yeah. Oh, I can't yeah. imagine you finishing with them closer than four feet, three and a half feet maybe. Two and a half feet is very close. Oh, I'll, I'll, smart. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you why two and a half feet is very close. For no other reason than, oh, you know what? I don't even want to draw the picture. I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just. I think <laughs> over the past two months, I've watched every one of your videos. So I bet you it's <laughs> something I've already heard from you. <laughs> For sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. Like, but I'm that's reaching... something, that was something that I learned big time was about the light, that I had no idea that the light should be that far away. I was taught by an old school grower that seems to do great, you know, averages about a pound per thousand watt HPS, but with no CO2 or nothing. But he's always told me, you want that light as close to those freaking tops as possible. And I did notice that with my last grow, um, I, I was miniaturizing those leaves like you were point out a few videos back wait 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 don't confuse as close as possible with no closer than possible remember so so i just want i mean just the observation is here's like a two line. Inches. this is this is yeah. as close as possible okay all right this here yeah. is as far away as necessary see the thing is it, yeah. it just depends on what side of the, la the line you're standing on because i describe things in terms of if you kill your shit you can't recover so yeah. i always err on yeah. the side of caution so your boy's right i mean he's right right so as close as possible however I just want you to understand that as far away as necessary is depends on what side of the line you're standing on. And specifically, because growers, I just, I, I want to look you in the eyes when I say this. <laughs> specifically, growers are 18 to 49 year old, dumb, stupid, aggressive alpha males, just like me, who think yeah. that solving a problem that is caused by doing too much that it can be solved by doing even more. And this has nothing to do with the plant. This is all about the individual. Because if this was about the plant, you wouldn't do more, you would do, and you would very carefully choose your words, and you would do what the plant wanted. But 18 to 49 year old, dumb, stupid, aggressive males are not known for empathy. That's all I'm suggesting. Is that males are not known for empathy yeah. uh, are they not the empathetic ones of the species and if you try to make growing cannabis all about you you'll never succeed when you make this all about the plant then suddenly you are now on this side of the line and you can use as little as few nutrients as necessary or as few waterings as necessary when you take away the immediacy of growing cannabis when you take away the intensity of growing cannabis and you understand that this has nothing to do with you and that five minutes in your life is 12 weeks to the plant, they can't stand that kind of attention. Yeah. So when we talk about light and space and distance, you have, a, you have to determine if the shape of the hood matches the canopy. Because if you put a if you put a too small a plant under a light, it's a problem. If you put a big plant underneath too wide of a light, it's a problem. If you put a deep penetrating light, that's why whenever we go over this, whenever we talk about yield, and we talk about like the average yield that people get, let me tell you what yield is based yeah. on. Yield is based on light, how much light you have. If you have a 1,000 watt light, you are going to get three times the yield of a 400 watt light. Light, water, CO2 equals sugar and oxygen. If you add a light mover or CO2, you're going to get more yield. Then you have to have 100% healthy plants. You cannot have sick, shitty plants. If your plants are sick and shitty, how are you going to get any kind of a harvest on them? So the next component is how full is your garden? 
Because if your garden is half full, how are you going to put full weight if you don't have enough plant? So the, the correct distance of the light technically is such that if you're, if this is a four by six and we section it off into two feet like this, so everyone's four by two, this would be a 400 watt light, this would be a 600 and this would be a 1000 watt light. If you want three times the yield, you need three times the space. Now, a five by five, two feet deep is appropriate for a thousand watts. But I just want you to understand that if you have a light that looks like this, and it has a dispersion pattern that looks like this, you have entirely missed this area and this area. Now, if you take that same light and you back it up to here, you now have a dispersion area that looks like this. So this is now your minimum distance of that light. Now I haven't even discussed what that distance is. And I don't care if it's a 400, 600 or 1000 watt light, because frankly, if you had a 400 watt light right here and it dispersed like this, it would not work. You would have to back that light up so it was bigger. And it's the same thing with the 600 watt light. If you put a 600 watt light right here, how are you going to light up the entire 600 watt area? What I'm suggesting is, is that there's a relationship. And I know everybody argues, everybody argues that light fades with distance, but I don't care because I don't care if it's the sun. If it's 96 million miles away, the light fades enough. What I'm suggesting is yeah. it's a difficult thing to grow a two foot bud when your light only penetrates here and you have buds all the way to the outside. And how do you light up these buds in this picture? So what I'm suggesting is this, the number one selling light that people seem to have success with is those is that T5 in the lower corner down there, that four foot eight bulb T5. A four foot eight bulb yeah. T5, and this is the math, I, I always give you the same math. If you take a four foot eight bulb, it is two feet wide by four feet long. It's got eight bulbs in there. That's eight square yeah. feet. That means 400 watts divided by eight square feet equals 50 watts per square foot. Now, you look at the comments in my videos and I have all sorts of nuts. And I say you guys are nuts. Specifically, the ones that think one detail is more important than everything else. Like just some guy had an exchange with me trying to argue with me over how you can't use watts and how there are several other measurements of light. And then he cited oh God, me this yeah. video where there's some guy's got like this whiteboard <laughs> out and he's writing all sorts of numbers. Listen, there is nothing that's that critical when growing cannabis. You can literally leave yeah, it outside week. and leave it the fuck alone. <laughs> the whole job here is to leave yeah. it alone for 12 weeks and then harvest. So soon as you start getting into yeah. details, listen, I don't, I don't have to have, I don't have to have an open mind. I'm not looking to learn anything new. If you guys could grow as good as I do and as good as the customers that come through my store can do in six harvests, the first three you learn how to grow, the next three you learn how to shape them. If you can grow as yeah. good as me, that you will know that it doesn't matter what light you use because I can grow with every light. I'm just saying that it's tough for me to believe that a thousand watt LED should be 24 inches over your plants. If a thousand watt space is five by five and you put a light 24 inches away from your plant, the fuck does it light up the edge? And if it doesn't light up the edge, yeah. the fuck are you going to grow a pound and a half dry? It's, it's, exactly. it's, it would be like if you bought a car, um, if Lexus just, those two fools just broke the Lex, the, the Tesla record for 560 miles around a track pissing and shitting in a le in the in the Tesla they did not stop they averaged like 26.8 miles uh, uh, an hour 
If Tesla yeah. told you that their cars were 560 mile range because you grew, you and you had to drive and piss and shit in your car, they'd get sued. All I'm suggesting is it's never <laughs> it's never what you think. It's never the claims. It's never the claims. I mean, yeah. there are so few things out of the box that don't that fit precisely, that work just the way they're intended. And the more moving pieces you have, the greater the the greater the risk of failure. Now, earlier, what you had suggested was that your room temperature was uh, was acceptable, and that your light wasn't too close because the room wasn't too hot. What I would like to suggest is well, not so much that I got I got my lights right now. Pretty much after watching your videos, I started realizing that obviously I probably had my light way too close. Not so much for how much it will cover, just in general. Like I I was getting the miniaturizing, so either I was getting too hot near the tops of those plants, or it was just too much damn light. One of the okay, other, stop right so, there. Stop right there. That, you list yeah. those things as two separate items, sir. And what I would like to define, what I would like to very much clarify with you, was if you could not see, and you were blind, and you went outside, you would know the difference between the temperature ambient of the air, and you would know the difference of the temperature of the light hitting your clothes. Now, why do like yeah. Arabs and desert, pe desert country people, why do they wear multiple layers of clothing? Why? Because the outside layer gets hot, air rattles around between the inside layers, and then you got a little bit of humidity on the, on the inside to help pull away some of that temperature too. So yes, they have multiple layers of clothes, yeah. but they use them as an insulator against the sun, where thankfully here in the United States, we prefer to go in shorts and bikinis. There, they prefer to dress in two and three layers. Now, why? Yeah. Because it's an insulator against absorbing the light. What I would like to make the observation is that all light is heat. I, I don't know if all heat is light. It could be because when you think about fire, there's light there. And you think about microwaves, it heats your food. And it's not light that's visible yeah. to us, but it definitely is a wavelength on the spectrum. You know, I go over this. Uh, let me. Uh, I go over this a lot with you guys. Let me. Uh, let's. Let's do this. Uh, um, okay. So, are you a fan of those cool tubes at all? Those round cylinder cool tubes? Yeah. Listen, if you're going to line up a lot of lights and try to vent them, yes. But I will tell you that I, I will also tell you that if you put two hoods in that tent, just let's just say two Raptor hoods, two big hoods in that tent. And you yeah. vented the hoods through the tent, just like you're doing. I will tell you that there yeah. is enough radiation that comes off the glass and enough radiation, radiating heat that comes off. I mean, that hood, that Raptor hood is like 12 square feet of radiant aluminum sheet metal. Think about that. You can open yeah. up an oven 450 degrees, reach your hand and touch the aluminum foil. Why? Because aluminum foil sheds heat. That's why they use it on heat sinks on LEDs. Okay. Yeah. So you have 10 square feet of hood and six square feet of glass. Now I'd like to make the observation. Why is the inside of your car 140 degrees when it's only 100 outside? Why is the steering wheel so hot you can't touch it? Why is the glass in your window 140 degrees when it's only 100 degrees outside? Because all the IR, and when we look at, when we look at this, I just want to point out that, that this is right, um, let's see, I'm trying to find the one, okay, see this visible light, this is what we can see, right, from here to here. When we come back to this, when we come back to this image, so this is the range of visible light. But there is, right here, is where, right from here beyond, from 780 down to like 650, that's what the, the overhead FLIR, the forward-looking infrared, the forward-looking infrared 720, you have to call back in a minute. The forward-looking infrared radar on helicopters picks up. That's those little white men that you see like running when the cops are all chasing him and the little 
those are the FLIR, the forward-looking infrared radar. And what they see is light that's past the spectrum. That's what the infrared, when you buy the IR blocker, infrared blocker buys 720 callback. Um, the infrared blocker blocks out beyond this range here. I mean, it reads this range. The FLIR reads this, and the infrared blocker, the IR blocker, filters it out. So I will tell you that it, it, all you have to do is go deeper into the red spectrum where people can't see, or UV. People can't see UV in the blue side. So we can only see blue to a point and red to a point. That's our visible range. The predator can see outside of that yeah. range. Missile t tracking technology, radar technology, these can see things bouncing off. These can see wavelengths bouncing off. These can see all sorts of other variants. But I just want to un you to understand that specifically the duality of light is such that when a wavelength, that's what travels through space, light from the sun travels through, spa to, through space as a wavelength. Then as it begins to impact things in the atmosphere, the light scatters and filters. Some lights filtered, um, depending on what where you are in the desert, you get less filtering of hot end, like the red spectrum. We get in the cool areas you get more blue um black top reflects black top absorbs more and yet white reflects more that's why a park is 15 degrees cooler than the parking lot because the grass absorbs the light yeah. and uses it and reflects a lot of it but in all cases i would just like to point out that there is a thing called a wet bulb temperature for instance it's 100 degrees in vegas right now if i were to stand outside in a pair of swim trucks and I were to be sprayed with a mister and a fan blown in front of me, so air crossed my white right body, freezing. I would freeze. I could literally freeze to death yep. from hypothermia in the middle of there from some from some retarded experiment. Yeah. So there is when we talk about the store of energy, I just want to point out that when we do that okay so if you have there's that thing about water and i know i always use that example if you're working on deadliest catch on a crab boat you can work in 32 degree weather you can work in zero degree weather if you bundle up and you're working and you stay warm you can work on the deck of a crab boat for apparently 48 hours okay if you fall yeah. in the water at 32 degrees liquid water at 32 degrees you're dead in four minutes now, I know you want to argue convection yeah. versus conduction and the way that it wicks moisture away from your body. All I'm suggesting is, is that falling in the water is the same thing as spraying yourself with hot water outside in Vegas with a fan blowing on you. You'll freeze to death from hypothermia. So what I'm suggesting is there's this little bit of mass. So this is one cc of water. Okay, this is one cc of water. Now, there's a couple of rules that we have to know. So let's use Fahrenheit as our scale, and water boils at 212 degrees, and it freezes at 32 degrees, okay? One cc, yep. one cc of water requires one joule of energy to increase one degree Fahrenheit. It could be Celsius, I don't know, yep. it, it's irrelevant. Yep. However, if you cool water, if you decrease the temperature, then it releases one degree Fahrenheit. Okay, you have to suck one degree Fahrenheit. What I want to point out is, is that water can exist in two forms. We can have water at 212 degrees and we can have steam at 212 yeah. degrees. I can have both a liquid and a solid at at liquid and a gas at 212 degrees so if you were to put a temperature if you were to put a probe if you were to put a temperature probe deep <laughs> if you were to put a temperature probe into the into the steam it would read 212 degrees however it turns out that if you want to go from a liquid to a gas state instead of one degree to actually break the atoms apart finally, I think it's something like 632 degrees or 634 joules. I mean, if, if you go from 211 degrees to 212, it uses one joule of energy. Yep. 
when it absorbs one joule of energy, when you go from 212 liquid to 212 degrees as a gas state, it required like 634 joules, I think. That's why they tell it's you something like that or 934. I, I, I have to learn all that shit. Yeah. Latent and, and that's to break uh, yeah, it into latent a, heat. And that's, to break <laughs> it in, that's to break it into a gas state. But it's the same thing with ice. If you yeah. have 32 degree water, you would have to then remove, uh, fuck, what, 200? You would have to remove. I can't remember those yeah. damn numbers. But, it, <laughs> but water is a huge, water is a huge store of energy that's why you're dead in four minutes when you hit the water on the deadliest catch but you can work on deck all day you're dead in four minutes yeah. in the water but you can work on deck for 48 hours because when you go into and remember now that water should be ice the only reason it's not is because there's salt in it the density has changed but if you took out the salt it would be like that bottle that you see where it's water and then you impact it you cavitate the water, you get an air bubble and crystal clear water, and the water bottle freezes up. We've all seen that video. Yeah. So yeah, that's, pretty cool. that's, yeah, pretty that's cool. what I tell you guys. When, when you have to consider that because light is a store of energy, the same way the ocean on Deadliest Catch is a store of energy, the same way your car is 140 degrees, it's so hot, you can't you drive with your fingers on the wheel. Ah, 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 ah. All I'm saying is, is that yeah. it's a significant heat sink. It absorbs an enormous amount of heat. That's when you say um, it could be too much light or it could be too hot. I just want to suggest that it couldn't be too hot without the light. So therefore, all light is heat because the more light you have, the hotter yeah. it gets. Now, that doesn't mean your plants are too hot. It could just be too much wavelength. I mean, it could just be too much photons hitting the plant overall. I mean, just too many photons overall. Not That's even. why I was thinking I was getting my miniature. That's what I think was causing the miniaturization, that, that miniaturizing of the tops is because of just too much photons, basically, like too much light. And the heat wasn't an issue. My heat ranged between 77 and 82. No, nope, I don't care. And, I and I'll tell you why. See, I'll tell you why it's. I don't. I still don't think it's miniaturization, and I know I'm. I know it's fussy on this, but let me let me give you, let me show you a couple of images, and yeah. it just looked like deformed leaves coming okay. out of the bud. Like it looked like one of your past videos, and it could have been maybe it was a CalMag because I've never used CalMag before. I never thought I needed to. It was always an NPK and follow the bottle and. Keep it simple, you know. But um, 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 I'm thinking where I put these. So this is. I'll tell you though. Keep doing what you're doing, man. This is. Uh, I don't know how long you've been doing this for this podcast thing, but it's gonna blow up, man. I'll tell you right now. You're. Uh, I could tell within five minutes that you. That you you definitely been around the block a few times, so you know what you're doing, that's for sure. Uh, hopefully I come off as just a little bit bitter because I've been doing this so long. Just, uh, just a uh, little... Yeah, just, that's it. A little if, touch if, of cynical. If you got to talk, you know. Yeah, but you got to have to get in a way, right? I mean, we're not here to freaking, uh, you know, you're not here to... To make buddies here to teach people how to do things properly right so yeah you guys yeah. don't want to be my friend you want me to do literally straight brain dump that's what you guys want and you yeah. don't want to hear the nonsense because frankly i've heard all the nonsense before and i don't want to hear it what you guys want for the first time is the math behind doing this because that's what 18 to 49 year old aggressive males want is information yes <laughs> yeah okay here you're looking at a picture that I just put up. It should be coming around to you. Are you looking at the show? I am, but it's, it's a few minutes behind. Oh, a few minutes, huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so right I'm now gonna... I'm at, uh, let's see, what am I seeing here? Uh, yeah, you're just going through the one cc of water and all that. So it's a, it's a couple minutes behind. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so... 
So in, in oh, this trust me, I'll be going back and watching it again. So. Okay, so here for this, um, what I showed you is a picture of way too much light. See, there's a, there's a, a, a when something is acute and it happens very quickly, there is one pathway. But when something is chronic over a long time, you continue to you continue to give them too much light, way too much light. You end up with miniaturization. Um, when you get to way too yeah. much light, the plant also gets hot. So in this particular case, I'm showing you a picture of miniaturization. Now, a little too much light, and your leaves will turn dark green, and they will, your leaves will turn dark green, and they'll cower from the light. You won't get chicken claw, like too much water, you don't get chicken claw, but your leaves will cower down. They'll get long, slender fingers that cower down. When it's too much light for too long, it shrinks back into this. So this is how it shrinks back to you. Just like with overwatering, there is a difference between slight overwatering and significant overwatering. So you Almost have. Almost like it's a formed leaf. When it um, back, well, in your like case with in your case with too much light, there comes a point at, without images that I can't diagnose anymore. But I'm just suggesting that too much light looks like this this picture that I put up for you. So I, I just want to point out. All right, listen, I've got a couple more things. Thank you for the call. Okay, so I have this picture up. And, and what I really wanted to point out is that all light is heat. I don't care if it's an LED spectrum. I don't care if you have an ultraviolet spectrum. You know those army guys, they have that, red, they have that flashlight they clip on the, you know those clips, those little light clips that they put on? Do you know why there's a red one? Because red ones don't change the same, you have different receptors in your eyes for different colors. And the red, doesn't change the receptors so you don't lose your night vision at night. So they use the red ones. It's not because it shows something up magically. It's so you can keep your night vision as the night goes on and your your rods and cones open up, your rods open up, and they absorb more light. The red light doesn't close them down. Like you wake up and you open up your eyes and you're like, ah, it's so bright, and five minutes later it's not because you're receiving less light inside your eyes. Right, James, the steam is hotter than boiling water. Okay. All right, let's 720. What can I do for you? How's it going today, man? Good morning. Uh, just uh, I had a couple questions uh, for a setup that I have or I'm trying to do. Okay, you've been blowing me up all morning. Tell me about it. Uh, sorry about that. I saw that you told me to call back, and it was a few minutes. Uh, I think I'm a few seconds behind, but uh, I am running a three-room setup. Uh, my small um, ceilings are in a closet. From my closet, I'm moving them into a eight by ten um, bedroom. In this bedroom, I'm running two uh, LECs, and, and that's one of the why, why I wanted to call you, because um, there's not too much information out there on LECs, uh, but I want to, you know, energy consumption is a, a big factor, but uh, I want to run two 315 uh, LECs. Uh, okay. And then from there to my flower room, uh, which is a 12 by 12, I want to run Six uh, six thirty watts. Sorry, say that last part again. What lights do you want to run? Uh, in, LED. In, uh, in, in flower. You want to run two. Sorry, How many? How many? Six on the twelve by twelve. So you want to run six LEC three fifteens in flower. Sorry, six thirty. So you want to run six, six thirties in flower. Correct. Okay. okay. 
So you have a bedroom that's eight by ten. Uh, Go on. Correct. Sorry. That's that's my veg, and that the veg, I want, I'm running two three fifteen uh, LECs. Okay. Now everything is gonna be AC. Uh, I am gonna use um, CO two. And on the, uh, I'm scrogging on the on the on the flower room. Okay, so, um, all right, I'm gonna, all right, thanks for the call, I'll finish this up. Okay, so this is, this is his math, right? So he says he's got eight, this, this right. So if we just do straight math, I don't care what light you buy, he's got 630 watts in veg, and he's got 3,780 watts in flower. So if we just divide this up into, into, 12 weeks, right? So this is going to be 12 weeks. If we just divide if we just divide this up into if we just divide this up into 12 weeks, that's this graph here. This is 12 weeks. If right here is 3,780 watts then in week one, you need 378 watts. I mean, this is from here to here is 10 weeks. It's 10 weeks. I mean, think about it. If veg is four weeks and flour is eight weeks and 100% light happens at about four to six weeks, this is 100% light right here. If this is 100% light at, at six weeks, let's say, plus four weeks, that means your timeline is 10 weeks until you're at 100%. So you cannot be at 100% in this zone. Why? Because the plants get bigger, right? Over here in week one, they're little. Over here in week 10, they're huge. It's 10 weeks later. That's why I tell you that technically, if this, whatever, if flour is twice veg. So if you divide 100% of the light up into three categories, one four weeks, two four weeks, three four weeks, then each one of these sections would require 33% more light. 33%, you increase this to 66%, you increase this to 99% light. That's all I'm suggesting. I'm just suggesting that you can't start off with 100% light. If you start off with 100% light, it better be 50 feet away. So if this is a timeline of 10 weeks, then both your nutrients and your light, must you must have to increase. I don't, um, 201, give me a minute. Um, I don't particularly care what light you buy. I don't care what light you buy. The reality is, I don't care what car you buy, but I can tell you that you don't see five-year-old Chryslers on the road. You don't see five-year-old Dodge on the road. I mean, you see 20-year-old Hondas, shit, you still see Preludes. You see F-150s, you see Toyotas, and Camrys are 25 years old on the road. But there's some stuff, uh, what happened to all those Mazda 626s, those cool little ones with the bubble backs? That, I mean, look at the PT Cruisers. They were all over, and they are gone. Where did they go? PT Cruisers and Sebrings, but Jeep. But for the most part, there are Jeeps of brands. PT Cruiser and Sebring was a model. I'm just saying for the most part, I don't see things last. You don't see, frankly, 10 year old Mercedes on the roads. Maybe they go to a different state to die in the cold weather. But uh, see the fuck out of Mustangs, right? I mean, there's just some cars you just see for 25 years. So I don't care. I don't particularly care. The reality is, is that if you have a thousand watts in flower, you need 600 watts in veg. If you have 
Let me, so let me start this over. So I'll give you the answer to what I'll, I'll give you the information you need to answer your own to answer the question. But the reality is this. If you veg with 200, you flower with 400. If you veg with 400, you flower with 600. If you veg with 600, you flower with 1000. If you veg with 1000, you flower with 2000. Now that doesn't mean you have to have 2000 on day one flower, because if you end veg at 1000 watts, the next day, the plants exactly the same. I mean, the plants on Tuesday, the way it, the same it is on Monday, you when you go into flower, you might transplant, but you're not going to increase the light. You're not going to lower the light. You're not going to increase the nutrients. The plants, the same fucking thing. The only thing you're going to do is shorten the day cycle from 18 hours to, to 12. I agree with you, Titan last 10 to 15 years because I like Jeeps. So I agree with you. Um, if you don't run LEDs, you don't have to run an AC. There you go, Truth Jr. So here's a guy who posts something. Clearly has not watched this show before because I will tell you all light is heat, right? And I don't care which light you buy. There comes a point where you are going to have to run an air conditioner. Why? Because all light is heat. I ran, the, I ran that venting test with those uh, kind LEDs um, along with... Uh, along with everything else, like I ran. Uh, hey, 201, give me a sec. I'll be with you, okay? Oh, okay, no problem. Let me finish this thought up. Um, so I set up this video where I like literally, um, I set up a series of videos for venting. Um, oh, I thought, okay, let's see if, I set up a series of venting videos where I, I, I just left the door, I, I sealed up the tent, we sucked the store air in, and and I, I literally mm. like thermographed all of these, I literally like thermo tested all of these different lights in the store. I think this is the video. Anyway, so I like, I, I thermo tested all of the different lights. I turned turbo tested the HID lights, the HPS lights. I showed you how the fans suck in and out. Like we like measured the heat inside the tents in these videos. Like we went over all of these parts and pieces to this. So what I just want to point out is like I told the last guy, I don't care if you take the glass out of the hood and you just AC the space yeah. or you suck air through the hoods. It's the same heat load. If you take the glass out, you stop making all the heat that the glass produces. Um, then your room will be famously, fabulously cooler just for taking out the glass. Then you just put the fan filter inside the tent on the floor or whatever. And then the two duct AC. Okay. Um, so you get a guy that pops up on the channel and he posts something like, you don't have to run LED with an AC. Okay, so let's say you buy a 200 watt LED that runs like a 400 watt. If you put it in a closet and you close the doors, even a two by four space with a little LED, it will get hot right? because all lights heat. And the plants will get hot because not only is the electricity hot, the light coming off of it is hot. What do you mean the light coming off of it is hot? That's why your window's 140. Okay. Um, oh my God. I haven't even, just, just so we're all clear, I haven't even started my show yet, right? Because I was like, oh my God, I'm going to go over like, uh, like, like, um, <laughs> I was like going to go over... I was gonna be like, "Hey, it's uh, time." My, my my main question was right. um, the only one was um, I, I'm I'm about to germ and put them in a two by two by four high, and um, my my only thing was the right light wattage to use for only three plants in that space. Okay, the space is what? It's a two by two, like two wide, two long. And then uh, four, about four and a half feet high, almost five feet high. Okay, so you can use uh, 
I'll show you what you. I'll show you what you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can buy one of these silly things. This is what you have the heat tolerance for. Okay, so. Yeah, but that it, it doesn't matter. See, you could say I'm only just starting to drive. So I don't need four cylinders. But the reality is you sort of can't buy a vehicle with less than four cylinders. So I know what you want. And I know people say, oh, they're experimenting or this and that. But the reality is this is the light that fits your space. This light will fit in a two by two tent. It's probably 125 watt compact fluorescent. And it's the light that I use to light up my stage and I light up my store with. When you look at, ah, uh, uh, you can't see yeah, it. Yeah, that's perfect. When you, <laughs> let's be clear. It's 125 <laughs> watts of compact fluorescent. 125 compact watts of compact fluorescent is good for two weeks worth of growth. Now, if you put three plants in that tent, you can grow for two weeks with them. If you put one plant in that tent, oh, okay. you can grow four weeks with it. I will tell you, however, that if you start with this light, your plant will never grow in such a way as to produce the weight. Okay, uh, let me give you an example. Oh. I'm a paramedic nurse. Okay, so I roll around in the ambulance and we issue drugs and I get to do all sorts of fun stuff and stab people and push tubes down their throat. It's spectacular. <laughs> cool. But I'm not allowed to do these things unless it's required. And I'm not allowed to do them half-ass. For instance, we have one drug where if I do it half-ass and I do it at one dose, like 0 0.02 micros, it affects mm -hmm. your kidneys. But if I do it at 0 0.10, it affects, it affects your kidneys and it makes you pee. But if I do it at five times the dose, it constricts your blood vessels and increases your blood pressure. Same drug, two effects, okay? You okay. can try to grow with this light. However, it won't grow the plant that you think it will. And it won't grow it in the okay. way okay. that I'm talking about. So essentially what... Yeah, because I didn't want to go too hot for that little space. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't care what you want. I, I, I really... I got to tell you, uh -huh. I, I can't express this enough. Well, well not, not me personally like that. I didn't, I, didn't want, I, I didn't think like they would want that. Okay, so the plant doesn't want to get too hot. That's correct. But you, what you've done yeah. is you've snatched one piece of data out of the air and you've decided like this guy who said oh if you use an led you don't gotta use an ac the fuck does that mean which led yeah. what you've done is you've snatched one piece of data amongst many shiny pieces of data and you snatch this one you've glommed onto it and now this is your central focus what I'm suggesting is, is yeah. that if you try to solve the problem based on this data, you will fail. It has to. Why? Okay. Because it would be like saying, oh my God, my friend shifts at 4,900. I'm sorry. I'm at a red light. I'm not even shifting. So why are you telling me how to drive? Because you have one piece of information amongst many. Ah, my friend doesn't stop when exactly. he makes left okay. turns. Oh, okay. Well, it turns out that in his area, there's a sign that says left turn doesn't stop. There are so many factors that go into this. When you call me with one factor, I'm not, okay, great. This light will not produce enough heat. I mean, it won't produce, it won't produce heat. Except what was that other thing? All heat is light. So if you don't produce a lot of heat, yeah. I would assume that the light is therefore not producing a lot of light and if you're not producing a lot of light hey congratulations you know what i mean mazel tov your light not producing a lot of light okay so, so real quick what is your what is your point of view on on people that are using like aluminum foil just to brighten up the light i mean i think it's a joke but i mean is it i, I don't know how you brighten up the light i mean that's see what i'm saying like, you're saying to like, like, the light? like like surround the surround the four walls like with aluminum foil and okay. the light will i guess get okay. to each side I'm of gonna, the plant. i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you the reality is if you can grow in the uh -huh. middle of if you can grow people that do aluminum okay so there's this group of oh 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 
I love the <laughs> aluminum foil grows. Give me one second. I believe. <laughs> um, okay, so that's not this. That's this. I believe Hotline Picks. Oh, yeah. I just love this one. Um, Hotline Picks. Okay, so I got to look at this. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Mm -mm. <laughs> give me one I, I just love I, I mean I just got this pick so I just love using it as an example but uh no problem but but you're only like is, a good 20 second delay on the video so I'll, I'll yeah this is what I think of an aluminum foil garden I used these pictures last week so this is what I think of an aluminum foil garden um uh, um it's such a douche move and i'll tell you okay. why because when everything is going good and this is a 12-week process when everything is going good when you're knocking it out of the park when the shit's growing like a weed aluminum foil <laughs> is aluminum foil is the furthest thing from your mind you literally the, the thing here is if you have a thousand watts worth of light and you absorb a thousand watts worth of light whatever it is it's four or five feet away from your crop if you can absorb all the light and convert it into sugar you win but uh, this guy huh. this guy could have bought <laughs> this guy could have bought i don't even want to get into it this guy could have bought a bio wave and I don't believe there would have been any difference. Why? Because <laughs> yeah, that is let's a just guy. say let's just say that aluminum foil reflects one hundred percent of the light that hits it. One hundred percent. I mean, there's like three percent of the light is hitting. So let's say you have a four hundred watt light. Um, Ten percent would be forty watts. One percent would be four watts. So you have a four hundred watt light. If aluminum or foil, if 3% of the light hit the aluminum foil, you would therefore get um, uh, 412 watts. I mean, it's 3%. Okay. Sure. It's 3%, man. And, and what I'm suggesting is, is that could 3% matter? <laughs> All this guy did is kill his shit faster. 3% faster. So... You see my point about you see my point about mm -hmm. this, right? So what I tell you guys is, silly growers do so would you silly recommend things. Like just a bigger like space, don't even put them in that space. What I would recommend is that you ask yourself if this is really and and and, and no disrespect. I know it's a ball buster thing to say. Yeah. It's not like you're in my store, um, and I'm trying no, to sell you something. You know what I mean? So I'm going to tell you. This may not be the hobby for you. Have you ever seen a fully grown pot plant? I mean, even this, even this POS, yeah, no, I have, I have. You, you couldn't put three but of I these. Only, in I only a, want to start it there. And then but I'll you couldn't it. put three of these in that space. So uh, okay. you say you have a two by two space and you've given me the veg information. But what you have to tell me is the flower information. See, you haven't told me, oh, California is 400 miles. Brilliant. You want to drive there. How many gallons do I need? What the fuck? <laughs> Are we on a motorcycle? Well, the, Are the, we... The flower, the flower info would be more like, a, I, I believe it's going to be a 6x6 six six and, uh, no, 6x7 and I think 8 feet high, 7 feet high. Okay. So tell me about the light in the flower. Um, that, that's what, that's what I'm calling you for, that lighting, lighting info okay. to light up well, those if you have, if you have this light and veg, you can use two of those lights and flower because flower requires twice the light as veg. So if you put one light and veg, right. you can have two in flower, but if you put three in flower, it'd be too much. So by the time you bought three okay. of these, and last, and last quick question, would okay. you, would you prefer, I mean, would you uh, recommend, um, uh, re uh, like planting new ones and then putting them in the same flower as the uh, ones that you just did. Like when they're would that interrupt the flower process of the ones that you put in? No, you could always you could you could add a plant every day if you wanted. It's another silly move. Oh, okay. It's all silly moves. The reality is 
if you have two lights, you have a, all right. Thanks for the call, bro. I mean, I got another one. The reality is, hey, five oh eight. Give me one sec. The reality is, flour is twice veg. I don't care if it's if you have a two by two in veg, flour can't be more than a four by a two by four. Flour is twice veg. If you put one of these lights in veg and you grow a silly plant, you're going to get silly results. That's all I'm suggesting. All I'm suggesting is that like anything. Now I'm 47 this year. And so I'm end, I'm leaving the 18 to 49 year old dumb, stupid, aggressive male bracket. I can't, I, I can't, I don't have the physical ability to be dumb, stupid, and aggressive anymore. And so my observation is that I have to work smarter. Okay. I never, I didn't learn it until you have to learn it. It's not, I mean, some people work one job their whole lives. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, I couldn't imagine. Right. So, oh, so I guess I lost you. All right, 508, you're still on. Okay. So what I'm suggesting is the more you do, and you could hear the frustration in that last caller. Every time I took him down the reality road, he was like, whoop, I got an eight by eight flower and a two by two veg. Whoop, don't tell me about veg no more, bro boss. And so all I'm saying is I sell hopes and dreams in my store. And... Um, I've got a caller and this is and so uh, this is gonna be the last caller I take for a few minutes because I've got one more hour to go and I've got some pictures I want to go over and if the whole show is out of control that's what happens when I take uh, I take calls all right when before I even get into it I'm supposed to do prod talk about project grow house I'm supposed to show you the new video the root race video oh, you know what 508 are you on the line I am okay okay yeah. four 413, I'm going to have to come back to you. 508, what can I do for you? Oh, oh shit. Hello? I think I hung up on 508. Wait a minute, Hello? wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. All right, 508. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh, shit, I can put people on hold. Okay, 508, tell me a story. Um, hi, I'll be quick. Uh, I hope this is an off topic, but... I just finished uh, a, a greenhouse and I want to do uh, light depri deprivation with lights inside the greenhouse. I'm in the Boston area. Our, our um, weather is terrible, not a lot of sun. Can you give me any feedback at all as to I've never done this before? Um, can you give me any helpful hints? Uh, growing outside sucks. Is that, that's a good. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about what are you using the light for? Are you using it to flower cannabis? Let's just, is that what we're doing? Flower cannabis, yes. Yes, okay. flower cannabis, yes. Okay, so there's a real short window where you don't have to use light depth, right? So if you're going to do anything else for the rest of the year, what you're going to end up with is you're going to veg outside. You might start them inside, but the process will be you'll veg. No, I, I, no I'm, I'm planning on vegging inside. Okay, but I suspect when you grow outside that what you'll do is you'll start veg inside, but you'll go outside and you'll probably veg, 413, give me a couple of minutes, you'll probably veg for, uh, for a few weeks outside. I mean, you don't, see the thing about, there's a big difference between an indoor plant and an outdoor plant, right? Not just in terms of the absolute size, but in terms of the lengths of the buds that you get. And if you look at the video that I start the show with uh, back here, this is this is the Bushmaster. This is an eight, I filmed, I time-lapsed all eight weeks of the buds. Now the Bushmaster, I'm giving you a little bit of advance notice, but the Bushmaster put what he vegged inside, outside, and he topped them real tight into a trellis and he got them all started. But what he didn't do was he failed to grow the really long arms that that cannabis is known that outdoor cannabis those really big plants are so you're going to have weeks and weeks and weeks outdoors with the veg time now you ask for a tip i'm telling you that you're going to veg for four or six weeks outdoors before you start flowering now why because if you have a greenhouse what's the ceiling height eight and a half feet mm. Sorry, you're not going to veg for a very long time, but you'll still probably veg for four weeks just because. Do you have a plant count? 
I was going to just put six because we just became legal here. So okay. I thought maybe only six. Okay, so if you're going to do six, then you want them as big as humanly possible. So you're definitely going Correct. to veg them for four or six weeks outside because you can't put... If it requires an eight-week veg to grow a three-pound plant, you can't get three pounds on a six-week veg. You can't get three pounds on a four-week veg. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to consider growing them big enough such that you can get that yield that you want, okay? Mm-hmm. The yep. rest in terms of life... <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? The rest in terms of light depth is the physical mechanics of covering the, of covering the, uh, of covering the greenhouse. Because if you have like a square one, you have to deal with sharp corners as it comes over. You may, I mean, literally all we're talking about is like two people with poles. How long is the greenhouse? It's a 10 by 12. It's a hoop, hoop house. Okay, so you could get two poles 12 feet long you can get if you look at it, it's uh 10 feet wide so you figure like you know it's got the hoop like this so um you'll probably need what it's got a 10 by 12 so if you do like a 10 foot hoop so 20 feet 30 like 35 40 feet wide by 12 feet long and you pull it up over the thing and it drapes down the sides and you leave the ends open and you, know, you maybe have like a little something that falls down on one of the ends but you can I mean, all you're talking about is two 13-foot sticks to lift it up over, and every night you go out there, and every morning you lift it up. But it, you're going to have some work you have to do, okay? Um, my question also about the covering it is, um, is it possible to take it off at, at in the middle of the night, you know, plan it so the sunrise, the 12 hours will be upon sunrise? Uh I'm not, yes. I'm not yes. a morning person. You would take it off. You would take it off whenever you wanted your 12 hours to start. For instance, I don't care if you keep it on from 11 a.m. You keep it open from 11 a.m. to from uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I don't care if you do 8 to 8. You could almost do 9 to 9. You probably couldn't do 10 to 10 because it would be too dark for too long. But I mean, you only get 10 hours of light. But yes, all you need is. I don't care if you leave it closed in the morning or closed at night. I don't care which way. Now, do you think I should put some extra lights in there, hang lights in there? No, I'm telling you, if you're just growing outdoors and the sun's a win-win, the only time you would keep extra lights in, in the greenhouse is if you were growing something that required more light. For instance, let's say it started to flower because now it's wintertime and it's 12-12 outside. If you wanted to keep growing two more weeks, then yes. You would, but then you wouldn't be taking, you wouldn't be working out the, uh, you wouldn't be taking advantage of the flowering outside. Now you're literally vegging when you should be flowering. See what I'm saying? Yes. Um, so, but I mean, it's not uncommon for us to literally have a week of rain and no sun. Okay. You would still use the tarp during sunlight hours. Don't confuse you seeing the sun with the with the plant seeing the light you know how you get sunburnt when you're in the water from like the neck shoulders up yep right that's because the light reflects because the water reflects the light it still comes through the clouds right you're still getting sunburnt on a cloudy day so i'm just suggesting yep. that lights are wavelengths not every wavelength passes through the uh clouds see what i'm saying so I'm, i'll get enough sun even if it's rainy and cloudy um, I will tell you that when you're growing outside, you will get what you get, and your plants will love you for it because <laughs> you can never do too much light outdoors. Um, it, it might be too much. It might be too much light in terms of the heat. Like if you literally put a plant outside right now in Vegas, I mean the blossoms fall off of tomato plants. So at 96 degrees, so it's a thing. Yeah. All right. Listen. Give. I need. Um. All right. Let me do this. I need. You guys watch this for one second. Give me one second.
awesome. It's a two hour show. That's my second cup of coffee. Yeah, that's my, uh, that's my potty break. Okay. Um, 413, you were going to give, you called a couple of times. Um, but before I take your call, listen, give me one sec. Before I take your call, um, I wanted to go over, I have, uh, some hotline picks. Let me, I wanted to show you, in fact, don't call for a sec. I wanted to show you. Okay. I think if you remember last week, if you remember last week, <laughs> you'll have to wait a second. Four one three. I'll take your call. Give me a sec. <clears throat> okay. If you remember last week, we talked about this picture. We went over the. We went over this picture here. Hmm. That's this week. Um, hang on one sec. We looked at this picture. We looked at this picture. We did not look at this picture. I'm. Um, we looked at this picture here and we just, we talked a lot about canopy. And when I talk about shifting gears from one gear to another, I really want you to understand how this relates. Because if you shift at 2100, you're getting great mileage. You'll go from second to third. You'll be in third at 1500. You'll be getting great mileage. But if you were towing up a hill, it would be disaster. So what I'm suggesting is if you were towing up a hill or you wanted to chirp the gears, you would shift to 4,900, right? So when you go into flower, if the plant's the same size, when you go into flower, literally all you're doing is shifting into a new schedule. And, and all I'm doing, remember like the whole intent of my show is I'm just trying to give you guys brain dumps of the information that I go across. And the reason I'm bringing this up from last week is because I'm talking about canopy volume. And I just want to show you that this guy, what we talked about was it was missing some plants. And it turns out I get an email from him and it turns out that what he did like right before the email was he had removed two plants. Now, let me just tell you that looks so much better than start than this i mean this is literally the day before i think oh this was this was like friday so this was friday he takes two plants out and this was i got this email yesterday i'm showing it you today look um no this is not that one but this is what it looks like wait let me see i think i have um i think i have one Okay, I think this is, let's try that again. Okay, this is with the plants back in it. So this is yesterday. I'm just suggest. well, in terms of the pictures that I got, this is, I got these pictures yesterday. Um, I also, I also got, I got a whole bunch of pictures yesterday. I also got this one. You can see how, see the two plants right down the middle. You can see how much more full this canopy is. When we look at the cross section of this canopy, I mean that cross section, that's a much better looking cross section than, uh, than this series here. So a lot of what I talk about, oh, nope, same, same. Oh, okay, so not the same plan count. Let's, uh, control W10. Okay, so yes, he added two more plants. Oh, a third one back here. There's a lot of information you can figure out when you look at people's pictures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a 50% increase in plant count. And when you look at, you know, that is a much more filled canopy. So I'm just suggesting that if this was 4,900 when we shifted, 
then this picture here would be this picture here is 2100 and and I would just as much like to say that oh, uh, uh, this is like shifting from second to third at 900 you know how like suddenly you're at 300 and you're like good 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 okay <laughs> Ooh. All, 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 I'm, all I suggest is, listen, all I'm, all I'm telling you guys is, and, and there is a, listen, not, not as much anymore. I'll tell you sort of how it's developed over the years. Um, I'll tell you how it's the sort of developed uh, over the years. So like when I first started putting out the videos, I put out a bunch of educational videos. But once all those videos are put out, like how many venting videos do I need to make? Now I need to make videos that help you integrate what I've taught you with the reality of the situation of what I see. That's why, the, that's why I don't do any planning for the webcast. I can literally just open up these pictures. I'm gonna tell you the same thing that's in my book. I'm gonna tell you the same thing show after show, week after week. There is no difference, customer after customer. Yeah, in the book, it's tough to integrate all the ideas. So what I do is in the book, I just try to give you the concepts. And then on the videos, in the webcast, I try to integrate those ideas. <laughs> of course, I like to make fun of stuff too because it's all super funny. Okay. Um, so when we go back to this picture, I just want you to understand again that is way better literally that's appropriate now okay and then um and then i think it's this one. Oh yeah look at that look how wide that canopy is uh let's see what this picture looks like blam okay That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good, right? So he's got the plants down the middle. Look how far away that light is. Look just... Listen, you guys drive me fucking bonkers when we talk about stuff. Um, I think I even have an email. Oh. Um, no, I don't. But it's a 600-watt light. Could be dimmed to 400. But... Look, all I'm saying is here, here, here is the distance away, right? And then, if I just showed you this picture, and I was like, seven one six, hang on a sec for me, okay? Okay. If I just showed you this picture, you'd be like, oh shit, you could have used a little bit of mag, maybe a little too much light, definitely had a little, uh, definitely had a little, uh, too much nitrogen, you know, you, you can see it in there. When you look right here, it was uh, running out of mag. In fact, when you look really close at that, I just want you to know that you can see how the individual chlorophylls, how the individual chlorophylls, you know what, I'm going to, let me see if I can, um let me see i bet you i can boom look at the individual chloroplasts you can see where they're running out of mag i mean you can literally see like the little honeycomb shape and they're running out of mag and if we think about it what do we usually see happens in the in the in the intervenal spaces, what do I always tell you guys about? Oh yeah, too much light. Why? Because here you can see they go purple. They turn green, they go purple. And if this is the, just so we're clear, if this is the vein here, if this is the vein here, and this is the vein here, then it makes sense that the things in the middle 
with the furthest distance to travel from the vein source would have the first signs of deficiency because that's the slowest rate of exchange. So, um, yeah, I'm just suggesting that, uh, that, that, that right there is what we're talking about when stuff's, when stuff gets like that. When I tell you about those inner, when I tell you about those tips and stripes, that's what we're talking about. Okay. So here you can see the tops really nice and even, right? I mean, this is 10 days, two weeks later. Um, probably you switch the nitrogen a little too soon. The tops get a little bit bright, but you can see, I mean, he's going to have a lot of tops. Where are you going to put the buds if you don't have a top in every square? Oh, dude, I've got a phone call. Hey, guy on the phone. Person on the phone. Do I still got you on the phone? Ah, okay. Anyway, whatever. Okay, so let's oh, let's open up this one. Yeah, if I showed you this bud, I'd be like, what kind of light was it grown under? Okay, let's say you said HI. Oh, you can see in the back. You can see back here. They're droopy. That's this kind of droopy is uh, too much light droopy. Just so you know, too much light droopy. But you can see the huge open space with no plants back here, right? Like over here and over here in this space. And so the buds look good. All I'm saying, if there was twice the buds, 413. All right, 413, what can I do for you? Hello? Hey, turn your computer down. Hello? Hey, turn your computer down. Okay, I'm going to turn it down right now. This uh, too much All right. Okay, now you and I are talking in real time. So don't look at the computer. What can I do for you? Um, I just want to talk about drying. Okay. I'll give you my standard. You don't even have to say any more. I will give you my standard. This is how drying works, okay? If you did this just right. if you did this just right. There's no 24 hours of darkness. There's no chop it and hang it upside down. There's no, there is no method that makes your bud any better than 12 weeks of no problems. 12 weeks of no problems is the best you're going to get. Okay. <clears throat> so let's start there. Now what we're really talking about is getting the moisture out of the plant because it has to be in smokable form, not too dry, not too wet. In terms of that, the, there's water in two parts of the plant. Hey, your, your thing's super noisy. Thanks for the call. I'll answer your question, but thanks for the call. But it's super noisy. All right, so there's water in two parts of the plant, just like with people. There's vascular, that's your blood. There's vascular, uh, there's lymph systems that's that takes a little water and the lymph fluid all through your system so if you were to just dehydrate outside well you've lost enough water until the pressure keeps your head up but you're not dehydrated like a leaf so there are different levels of dehydration one level is the extracellular space the space in between the cells then there's the vascular space then there's the water in the cells. So there's three places where there's water. Now the first place when you take your plants and you just literally just, you watch the, you watch the, um, give me one sec and I will show you. Um, 414, give me a minute. Cause I had some other pictures I wanted to, uh, go over to okay so bushmaster time to harvest x i just want to point out that sometimes you may think that you want to cut all the nugs off or trim it like this or trim it like that but i just want to point out that while the bushmaster i mean there are there are so many different ways and it's not, I mean, you could just as easily hang them like this. I mean, so now he's literally chopping the branches off the trees, knocking the big leaves off, hanging them up, 
and then you wait three days, 48 hours. Somewhere in there, it was hot. So what I'm suggesting is, is that the goal here is to evaporate the extracellular moisture. Then the next thing that you're going to do is you might seal the door, don't vent, and let the humidity build up. Or you might, if you have a smaller amount, you might put them in a paper bag. Why? Because you want the vascular moisture <coughs> to move into the extracellular space. So when we look at this picture, I mean, this is just a straight math game. If we look at the picture of a leaf, there is vascular, There is cellular and there is the intracellular space between that. There is the vascular space, the vascular, there is the cellular inside, inside the cells, there's the cellular space and there's the intracellular space. So your job is to dehydrate them such that there's, there's nothing left in the cellular space, there's nothing left in the intracellular space, and in the extracellular space, it's about 55, 65% humidity. That gives you a, like a bud that doesn't crush and break. Um, but once you, 314, 314, hang on one sec. But once you get that bud that doesn't crush or break, the next component we're talking about is what? Ripening. And the ripening is the next step. And so I always wonder, if you just let the bud sit, right? Like this bud here is like three weeks old. And that bud's like, I've just been smoking out of the same ounce bag for weeks now. I have a 55% humidity thing in there. So here's a bud. I mean, you've been watching me smoke this bud for weeks. It, it, it must have cured just in the bag. So I'm just saying that there comes this point where if it doesn't get, and this is dry and crumbly, like, like when we talk about moisture content, like that's, you can hear it. I mean, that's, that's dry and crumbly. That's too dry for my taste, but I keep opening up the same bag, right? Like, you know, whatever. Okay. So I'm just suggesting that's dry and crumbly. And that's not, you know what I mean? When you get an ounce of it at a time and it, like it's not in like the fridge or some shit or you're not babysitting it, it does that. And yet it keeps getting me high. So all you want to do is evaporate the extracellular moisture. Let a little bit of humidity build up, like you go back to a bag, let a little bit of humidity build up. And if you don't have that much, you may keep it on the branch, you may put it back on a hanger and you may do that. At that point, you also might knock the buds off and you might put them on, when you knock all the buds off, rather than hang them like this, you might Put them on put them on a rack like this see you wouldn't use uh, you wouldn't put buds on branches on racks like these because the racks like these are meant for buds that you've taken off the branches but yet in terms of the process of when intracell extracellular moisture gets evaporated build up a little bit of humidity the intracellular moisture moves into the extra the vascular space the vascular moisture moves into the extracellular space you take the buds back out now if you've trimmed them again you'll put them on a hanger and then um from there you you really you could put them in a bag again but usually at this point you start burping them and now the intracellular moisture moves into the the intracellular moisture now when we talk about silica and cell walls this shit right here is what you're doing for silica because if you remember when i just showed you that picture and how everything looked like a hex it actually all the hexes actually look like this and they're really 
close together and then there's this there's this vascular space where the extracellular moisture is but this right here is the silica cell wall i mean that's the cell walls up that's that's why they say it's drought resistant because the thicker the cell wall the thicker the the that honeycomb shape is where the chloroplasts are and once you build up that cell wall well, you also get thicker in the leaves and the buds too, and you also get thicker buds. But all the cell walls get thicker with that extra, with that extra silicone, silicon. Anyway, then this is usually where you start burping it. Now, don't care what strain it was, don't care what light it was, don't care what blah 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 it was. In terms of curing, this is what you're trying to accomplish. And there, are, listen, there are different stages and steps to it. All right, three one four. What can I do for you? Hey, what's going on, girl boss? Good morning. Uh, uh, I had a question. You, I was watching the show, and you said you were showing the tips of the plants on the canopy, and you were showing how, how you said that he cut the nitrogen off earlier, and you could see it lightening in the tips of the plants where it was growing. I kind of get that when I grow, and also I have a problem like toward the middle to later end of the uh, cycle with like nitrogen problems or either. I'm thinking it's mad problem, but I'm not sure which one it is. Okay, let's start with the light. What light do you have? I have a, um, I, I'm actually using my thousand watt now, but it's turned down, like it's dimmed down to like, uh, I do believe it's 700. Okay, so how big is the space you're growing in? I have a um, four by eight grow tent. And how much eight light is how much light is in the tent total? Um, I'm not familiar. What do you mean? Do you have two lights in the tents or just one light? Just one light in the tent. One one thousand watt dimmed down to seven hundred. Yes. Okay. How big is the hood? Uh, it's a uh, six inch hood glass. Um, it's cold. Our cold. It's about. Uh, let me look at it. Is it is it two feet long or three feet long? It is. Is it is it like two a feet little? Long. It's it's two feet long, right? Just like a little well, hood, right? Yeah. Okay. Is it? How how is it stuck all the way to the ceiling? How far away from the top of the tent is it? It's about I would say about from the canopy. It's about two feet four, 24 inches because I'm just like not all the way down because the plants aren't that tall, but they're like halfway up and it's they're, it's probably like about two feet away from the uh, canopy because I normally what I do is. I um, hold my hand under the light and where it starts hitting heat, I lift my canopy up that high to where, like, just right before the heat starts hitting the canopy, I leave the light right there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to just do a little bit of math for you. A 600 watt is a... 600 watt is a canopy four by four by one foot deep. Okay. So just to give you a little bit of math, this is your hood. Okay. You have 700 watts in a four by four space. First off, you have a very small yeah. hood. Second off, a four by four space is meant for a 600 watt light you have 700 watts in a smaller hood so this from here to here is 700 watts and from here to here is 600 watts so with a big hood you have way less light with a small hood you have more light plus you have too much light for the space so when you when you okay. say when I talk about this canopy, let me I'm gonna fill in the picture will catch up with you in a sec. But how many plants do you have? Uh, right now I have about ten now because I'm missing one. I usually run like four, eight to twelve, four, three, 
four, twelve, three gallon pots in there, like four, eight, twelve in three rows. Okay. How long did you veg them for? Uh, they veg probably for about like, um, I say about four to five weeks because I can't let them veg too long because they'll get too tall for the tent. Okay. That's that tells me everything I need to know. So you're not killing your okay. ship with too much light, too bad. However, it, you in a four by four space, you can only do about 600 watts. And I tell you that because we are literally looking at a picture here. I'm gonna post it up. This guy right here. I see it, I see it. This guy right here is is at 600 watts and look at how far away that is so i just want to point out again that you said you were at you said your hood if, if literally like if i'm uh if this is your hood your hood would be here so i just want you to see how far away this hood is compared to yours so i would imagine that if your hood was closer then when we see yeah, it is. when we see this i would imagine that the problem would be worse and that's why i don't care see when you look at this canopy listen i don't care if that's one plant or 10 plants or 12 plants i don't care how many plants that is all i'm suggesting okay. is that's the start of flower so when you start flower and I hear a grower say something like, bro, oh, if I went any longer, they'd get too big. I'm like, listen, that's not the same complaint. Okay, just just, just so we know. That's not the, this, th this guy doesn't come in my store and say the plants got too big, right? So what are the two complaints that good growers right. have? What are the two complaints that good growers have? Do you remember? Uh, no. Two, grow, good growers have two complaints. Plants got too big for their light. Girlfriends hate trimming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all I'm suggesting is that this guy, when he comes in, he does not say the same thing as this guy. This guy here never has bugs. Bugs can't attack a healthy plant. Right. So this guy never gets bugs. Yeah. So that, that's what I'm suggesting is that before I solved... See, you called me up and you thought it was like a nutrient or a nitrogen issue. But the reality is... Yeah. Until you back that light off. I don't know. You might be using uh -huh. the right... If your light's not too close, the nutrients that you're using might be right if the light was two feet further away. Now, is two feet further away too far okay you might be able to do 12 or 18 inches away but until you do a little too far you can't bring it closer see everybody does too close so you're going to fail okay. the thing is is if you go too far you just get a little less weight oh okay can i put it a little closer yeah oh i got a little more weight perfect but if you go too close of course you're going to tell me you're experimenting all right, hey, phone's super noisy. Thanks for the call. Of course you're going to tell me you're experimenting because you're killing your shit. I'm, I'm telling you, this guy here, this guy here, this guy here doesn't come into my store um, uh, telling me about his success. 414, hang on one sec. All right. Okay, 414, what can I do for you? 
Okay, so I have a question. Um, now, I tend to grow auto flowers because I don't have a designated space, but I do have a tent. However, all of my auto flowers seem to be stunted from, I, I, I have absolutely no idea why they're just stunted, but, you know, I look online and I see some people grow three, four, maybe even five ounces of autos. I usually top out around one and a half. And I'm just trying to figure out why my plant is, my plant stunted at 12, 13 inches. Okay, what light do you have? So I, I have a four by four, four by four by eight tent with a 600 watt HPS. Just one. And I also have uh, a couple of LEDs beside light. And I don't use them, but I have them. Okay, so you have one 600 watt light. Yeah. Okay, so you you have how many flat how many auto flowers do you put under your 600 watt light? Um, I, I had only grew a couple at a time, but I want to do probably like a sea of green next time. Okay, you really can't do a sea of green with an auto flower because a sea of green involves starting from clones. So you really can't do a okay. sea of green with auto flower because, well, let's just say you have a three week veg and a five week flower. So you're done in eight weeks. How long is your auto flower? Yeah. Uh, how long does it go? How, how, how yeah. tall it? No, how long does it go? Usually my autos nine, ten weeks. Okay, Man. so you have ten weeks start to finish. Okay? Yeah. So you definitely have let's say you have a four week veg and a six week flower. How could you possibly yeah. do a sea of green? Because you've got a four week veg. A sea of green is like is like you have a six hundred watt light. So let's say you took thirty clones, put them in one gallon buckets, veg them for three days and then flowered them. That would be a sea of green. Okay. But you can't do that because you've got okay. a four week veg. So if you have a four-week okay. veg and a six-week flower, well, that's pretty close to a four-week veg and an eight-week flower. So let's say right. you have a three-week veg and a seven-week flower, whatever. You would just start 10 plants. But you have a 600-watt okay. light. Is it dimmable? Yes. Okay. So when tell me a little bit about how you light up your plants is it always at 600 watts is it never at 600 watts tell me more about the light uh so, okay so generally when i start them off they all start from seeds of course so generally when i start them off in seeds i run it at about 250. how far um, away how far away like the first uh so three feet okay uh so then probably the next two weeks. I, I crank it up usually every two weeks until I get to when it starts to flower. Then, then it's run 600 all the way through. Okay. So I, I would just like to suggest that I'm going to draw a picture. And this is okay. literally, this is, I'm going to, um, give me, Hang on one sec. Let's see if I can capture this again. No. No, son of a bitch. I, I, I got to tell you, the, uh, the, the Logitech cam. I have been a Logitech camera guy. I've been a Logitech product guy for a long time. And uh, mm -hmm. every, literally, I last week I replaced this. This week I'm going to have to replace this camera. And this is my, I love my, um, no, I need to, uh, give me one sec. I'm going to see if I can just capture my camera one more time. Otherwise... I'm not going to be able to draw you a picture, which is too bad. Okay. Oh, okay. So. Uh, uh, I, I forgot to mention, I also have an air conditioner too, so the heat is never an issue. Okay. Interesting. All right. 
Boy, I gotta tell you, I've gotten way better at this. Uh, that's why you like, you gotta, you can't just like, I remember everyone was screaming at my microphone and I had all these problems, but now suddenly I get this shit, boom, fix it live on the air. I used to do, I used to be mm -hmm. IT Jason. I used to have another radio show. Okay, so see this chart right here about how things get bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw you a cycle where you have a three week veg and you have a seven week flower. Okay. Okay. You're saying that you put your 600 watts on here. I'm saying that you won't have 600 watts on until here. So literally okay. you're at three weeks. You're at 200, 400, 600. I'm saying right. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. So same light right. fixture. I'm saying stretch it out over a greater time. Year two intense. Okay. Now, I don't even, now listen, all right, I got to get back to what I was doing. Thanks for the call. Now, listen, I don't even know if that was the only problem. All I'm suggesting is, is that growers suffer from stall and balling. You, the first 90 days is always the hardest because you don't have the plants and you don't have the canopy. And when you have auto flowers with a shorter veg and you can't control it, you can't do things like sea of green. You have to, if you were doing a four week veg and now you're doing a three week veg, if you were doing six plants, you're going to have to do eight or 10 now. Just, I'm just saying you don't drive a four cylinder like an eight cylinder and yet they're both automobiles. Um, okay. All right. Son of a bitch. What was, oh, okay. So we were going through this guy's canopy, but I think I had, um, I would like to give you another example from a, okay, so we got about 15 minutes left. I would like, so, okay. So this is the picture that I get for the hotline call. All right, I'm probably done with calls today, so um, I'm probably going to run out of time. Hmm. Yesterday, oh, fuck, I didn't get to do Project Grow House. Yesterday, literally, I shut down the show for the customer. Boom, like 180 bucks. Literally watched the show, drove down here, and then interrupted the show to buy some shit, which is a damn good reason to interrupt the show. Um, okay, so you look at these. Let's take a little closer look. Next picture. Whew. Okay, you can start to see the edges are a little rough and some purpling. When you have purpling and you overwater the roots, then you can't absorb nutrients, so you start to get purpling. The nutrients also start to build up, and then you get burnt edges. And so, um, oh shit, I should probably ask you guys if you see, if you notice. Okay, okay. Um, I've got something for the person that can tell me all about. I've got something for in the U.S. <laughs> if you're in the U.S. and can tell me why these plants have, have uh, why I'm telling you guys these plants have too many nutrients um, and they're starting to burn the leaves. And I know, and he has, he has not fed them yet. So w tell me what I'm talking about. And I will do something. I will get you some sort of like fun little kit. Um, oh, well, let's talk about, let's talk about too much light. Holy cow. He's got two on the side too. Even though those are like the T12s or the T8s or something. Holy cow. Oh, wait, no. He's got lights on all three sides. Holy cow. He's got lights on all three sides. Because, yeah, that looks real like happens in nature. <laughs> listen you guys come up with a lot of shit and when you look at and it's it's my job to decipher it and sure i could just as easily say oh man you don't need those lights on the right or the left side too much light doesn't cause the reality is you still need to have to solve the fucking problem and the fucking problem is the leaves look like this and the petioles 
look like this. They're purple. And he's got this stuff here, which is too much nutrients. So we've got purple roots, I mean purple petioles, and too many nutrients. Now, too many nutrients can either be too many nutrients, too much salt, or it can be um, you've rotted the roots and the salt buildup, even though you're not feeding, even though it's the correct amount of nutrients if the plant were healthy, because the plant's not healthy, the nutrients build up. And then you look at this leaf, these leaves right here, and to some extent, oh no, Christopher Hawker, I hope not. So, um, yeah, you look at this leaf right here and a little bit right in here, and you can start to see what looks like a little bit of overwatering, but not too bad because when we look at the plant in its entirety at the tops, okay, listen, they've got one of the logic, one of the, see, okay, so let's take a look at the branching. So this is the top, and then this right here is the body of the plant. Now, when we look at this, it's not... It's not a whole lot. There's the lights from the veg. It's not a whole lot bushy going on, right? Because when we look at this, oh, fuck. Let's see. I got to find the, I got to get this stuff. Listen, I haven't spent one second organizing the show in all of this time because I've been making all the other videos and all the other stuff um, and doing all the other stuff. So I've sort of been like uh, neglecting this. Um, but once I get organized, I'm even going to put like little tabs in my book. Okay. See how bushy this is right in the body of the plant. See how bushy that is. There's got to be like 12 tops right in there. You would literally like top it, clean the bottom, top it, clean the middle a little bit and then veg this for another week right i mean that would get you like this super short bushy little plant and yet and yet that's not what we see with this we don't oh this one sorry sorry this one we don't get to see that same kind of growth with this, do we? It just doesn't have that same structure right here. Now, no, the, a lack of width is called beanstalking. Let me give you an extreme example of beanstalking. Um, okay. This is an extreme example of bean stalking check that out <laughs> boy when we talk about uh no body the okay so i'll tell you something the people who say they low stress train anybody who has ever said the word low stress chain over water as soon as you sell say lst People who low stress train take a plant that looks like this, they bend it down and so all the tops grow up, okay? They take a plant, okay, I just, I just wanna be clear. People who say they low stress train take a plant like this, <laughs> a beanstalk plant like this, and they lay it down so all the branches can come up, okay? Now, uh, when we, t when, when I talk about uh, super cropping and and scrogging a plant, um, let's just be clear that I'm talking about this. I'm talking about this. Okay. Okay. This plant, just, just so we're clear, I overgrew this plant. You can see how big they are. You can see how big they are in the video, right? Look at how big they are. I took that plant. I built this trellis. We, I put... Um, okay, 
sorry, I'm trying to work on this. Uh, okay. Okay, this is trellising, right? You got to keep it under control. So I put the plant. So I put the plant. Obviously, it's too big for that tent, right? So by the time I was done with it, I took that plant and I turned it into this. Look at how low that is. Like I literally lowered it like two and a half feet. Okay, this is scrogging. All right, that's scrogging. This is low stress training. See, you couldn't scrog that plant. <laughs> That's why I tell you guys, when you come in and you say things like, my plants get too big for the light. I think, um, I, I think you come in and you say, my plants got... You come, you come in and you say things like, uh, let me show you. <laughs> okay, I got this. I got this. Mm -mm. Maybe not. Okay, almost, almost, almost. I got this. This is a uh, old, old Navy garden rescue. <sighs> okay, let's get this up there. This is old Navy garden rescue. Okay, so when I suggest that, here's a guy who, uh, let's see, here's a guy who, uh, <laughs> this garden has seen a lot of harvests, but you veg for one extra week and suddenly you're, I mean, that's, okay, that's rotated sideways, but dude, those plants are in the light. I mean, Can I get a little pop-up picture here, YouTube? No, let me see. Maybe we can just run into it. Okay, so you can see the legs are the legs are just too long. The legs are just too long. There you go. Oh, come on, man. Those those plants are in the light. Those plants are in the light. You look at this. Oh, you look at. Um, nope, not this one. Bah. I'm going to have to go back to the other folder. Hot, um, hotline. Let's see. This is show. Okay. Ready? There's this pick. And things are looking good. And they've got a foot to go because they're like just starting flowering. There's this pick, right? There's that pick. There's, I mean, you can see the lights clearly not in the picture, right? Like you look at these pictures and the lights clearly not, the lights clearly, oh, that, that's the not enough plants, right? These are the ones that we went over with the not enough plants. And then, I mean, they look great. It's full. Look at that. The light's nowhere to be seen. Oh my God, it's always the same shit. And then you look over here. And the reason I say good growers, they run their light, they run their buds into the light is because uh, if everything's going right, literally seven extra days and, and you will be sad because your buds ran into the light and you look at old Navy's garden rescue. And like I said, I mean, I, he would have really had to fold them down. Like, 
I wanted to show you, like, look how long the legs are. I mean, like, look, he's got a really short canopy. Look how long those legs are. It's a tough thing to finish. Okay, so you can tell me next week how... <laughs> how how Vogel burned his how Vogel burned his leaves without ever feeding you think you know um, um, okay so if you think you can get through you think I got something for someone that that has that can put together a story for me because I knew it Three seconds after I saw this picture, I was like, what the, oh yeah. Why? Because I've seen it so many times before. That's why I tell you, it's always the equipment that gets you. Oh, almost always the equipment that gets you. There's a lot of things that can go wrong when growing cannabis. Okay. It's about time for me to, oh, fuck. I didn't get to go through all the people from all the countries that are, that are like in the video. Like I didn't get a chance to say, Good morning to like oh, matey mate and oh let's see Europe and I didn't get a chance to say good morning to anybody I didn't get a chance to oh I'll tell you know one of the things that I tell you is you call me or you ask me questions or you come to the store and you're like focused on boom oh man 200 watts in a two by two space this one little detail in this huge process of decision making you're focused on your micro focused on one detail the, the, the watts of the light that you're... I didn't get to read the comments either. So much shit. It's always the same shit. But what I'm getting at is, is you have to use the equipment properly. There are so many things that can go wrong. I had to, I did a tech support call yesterday. Okay, four-week veg, eight-week flour, finished a pound and a half. Three, three, four and a half wet, finished a pound and a half dry, 1,000-watt light. Everything went great. Um, there was a thank you email that came with the pictures and everything. In Louisiana, drying four and a half pounds on the second floor at 100 degrees at 100% humidity with three feet of water in the first floor. Listen, I can draw you all the close up I can draw you all the curing pictures you can ask me all the curing questions you want but the reality is it's tough to cure a bud in a hundred degrees and a hundred percent humidity with three feet of water in the first floor I'm just saying there are a lot of obstacles to growing cannabis and that's why when you come in and you're focused on nutrients or whatever else it is you think that you're micro focused on, you got to take you got to take a step back and look at the big picture, which is what I started the show with. It's tough for 18 to 49 year old dumb, stupid, aggressive alpha males to take a step back and look at the big picture and realize that less is more, and that success is about success is about getting the yield that you're supposed to because you can't say oh man i'm just in it for quality can't just say that because you have to get everything right you still even if you want quality you don't care about quantity you still have to get everything right to get the quality and by def because no one comes in here and says i want the quality and not the quantity right no one comes in here and says i just want more because then you just buy more light but the reality is Quantity and quality are inextricably linked together. They are unseparable. Unseparable. Why? Because if you do anything wrong, you're not going to get the quality. If you do anything wrong, you're not going to get the quantity. You can't miss a beat. I mean, this is a dance that you have to dance with your plants and the rotation that you have. The one light dance, the two light dance, the three light dance. That's why when you call me with uh, an autoflower thing and you say, I'm going to see if green them, Wah! And it's not, I'm not making fun of you, no disrespect caller, nothing like that. I'm just saying that, you know what I mean? Like a four cylinder and an eight cylinder are both vehicles, but you don't drive them the same way. You gotta keep the RPMs a little higher in a four cylinder, keep it in the power band. Do that with an eight, you're gonna spin the back tires. 
You can't put $400 tires on a $400,000 car. If you do a shitty job, you should expect shitty results. If you, uh, if you grow with no light, you should expect no yield. I'm just saying that if you show up with any excuses or any, anything, and, and people tell me all the time, Oh, grow boss, there's a lot of ways to grow. You don't know everything. I'm going to argue with you about the lights. I'm going to argue with you about the nutrients. I'm going to argue with you about whatever one factor you think is important. The reality is, you better know every fucking factor in the chain of events. And you better know how every factor affects every other factor in the chain of events. And the only way that you can do that is to know how it ends. Because when I say that there's a difference between a little too much light over a long period of time and way too much light in a short period of time, dude, that's a clue you have to know to work backward. That's information you have to possess. And boom, once you're at the end, and it doesn't matter what you do in life, because you have a job too, like in my magic mirror, I see you at work dealing with the next customer going, did this motherfucker just asked me the same fucking question they come in my store all day and literally one person leaves and i'm like oh yeah i show them the t5 in the i show them the t5 in that lower left corner there and they're walking out and the next person's coming in the door like hey and i'm like oh you want oh you're going for yourself you want this t5 you won't buy this shit over you shouldn't buy this shit here but since it's cheaper you probably will even though i'm going to show you that t5 Oh yeah, half the time they buy this light. I'm pushing like a 400 watt T5. They're buying like a thousand watt HPS. All I'm suggesting is, here's a guy in Louisiana who finished a great harvest and his shit got bud rot because it was 100 degrees and 100% humidity and he had three feet of water on the first floor. Listen, there's a lot of reasons to fail. <laughs> Oh, we were talking about dispensaries. Remember how I said, oh, the dispensaries, they don't, uh, they don't tell you what nutrients they are. This company here has a nutrient summary. It's a DRH special blend. <coughs> that butt is dry. Woo. So here's a label that somebody was printing and it had their special blend on it. It said, oh, by the way, it says uh, 1,000 watt, forgot. It also says lighting, 1,000 watt high pressure sodium. Brilliant. Now, if only Ushio could find a way, can find a way to get their product on this report. It's one more way that they could advertise. We might actually go to a facility, a dispensary one day and see, oh shit, kind LED and hydro with advanced nutrients. Humboldt nutrients grown in Fox Farm with a sprinkle of wiggle worm, worm castings and a splash of 400 ppm of cow mag. Oh shit, we might see that one day. But the reality is we might also see like, you look at cigarettes, they're not like, Grown on a farm in canvas. Oh, cheese. Cheese comes from happy cows. And happy cows come from California. Fuck Italy. Your sad ass cows produce some of the best cheese. So happy cows produce great cheese. But Italy's not happy cows. Maybe they're super happy. Could be super pissed. Don't know. We just know that they're not happy because there are happy cows in California. So you look at Italy's cheese or wherever cheese comes from. Wherever they produce wheels of cheese. <laughs> all I'm saying is, these are the relationships between the stuff. And you have to get all the aspects right to get the details right. But then you watch like, um, uh, you watch like the, uh, great, the great root race. Oh yeah, I was totally supposed to talk about that too. Yeah, great root race. So this is episode three. And when we talk about the great root race, you should see the products. Like, this is like, uh, ah. okay, so this is the great root race. Um, I have to uh, learn a new skill here. I have to use my mouse to do this. Sorry. Oh, yeah. 
copy. So this is the great root race. And I go over here. This is episode three. Okay. So I'm supposed to produce, I'm so, I'll release episode four here in a minute. So I've got episode four coming up. But you can actually see the difference in these products. But then everything is going good. I didn't kill the shit with too much shit. Whatever that shit is. Too much light, too much water, too many nutrients. That's week three. The shit really, the shit really blows up in like day 35. Ah, it's 11.07. So you can do the math. For every minute I'm still doing the show, I don't have a customer in my store. Because, well, it's hot out. It's like 114 degrees outside. Ah. Oh, yeah. Nasty weather. Anyway, so I was telling you guys, like, when I first started doing this, I started producing one type of videos where I was educating you on the material. Okay, it was all one way. It was uh, simplex communication. These are the videos that you guys need to know for the base information. Base information in the book. Then we do a show like this where I can start to integrate it, refer to the videos that I'm showing you, post them up on a webcast, and I can disseminate a lot of information very quickly. But what you can't bitch about me for anymore is, okay, so is it aggressive on the videos that I made, those educational videos? Hell yes, but it's a bunch of dumb, stupid, aggressive males. If I had showed up sucking my thumb, carrying an umbrella, um, excuse me, but I maybe think it should be done like this instead of like this, ah, oh, you guys would have laughed me off the planet. Besides, I'm an 18 to 49 year old dumb, stupid, aggressive male. I am literally every one of my customers. I am every one of my customers. That's probably why we get along so well. Because I am every one of my customers. <laughs> you just sit here and smoke bong loads for two hours in the morning. Which, you got to admit, sounds like every one of my customers. But now we look at videos like this, and I can help you extrapolate the data. And I, I don't get nearly the arguments that I usually get. Like, I got... Um, so here's a guy who starts his email off with, is it a good problem when you get much more weed than you can imagine? Um, what was this one? I think I even have, give me one sec. I, I even think I started. Did I start this guy? I thought I, uh, I thought I had this guy in terms of the pictures ready to go. Bah. Anyway, so I guess I don't. Uh, so this guy goes on to uh, this guy goes on to thank me. Um, he's just got a uh, just huge, huge. Oh yeah, just huge, uh, huge plants. Spectacular. So he goes on to thank me because is it a problem when you get more weed than you can imagine? You can't do that when your light's two feet away. You can't do that when you're watering more than you're supposed to. You can't mother and smother your plants because it's a 12 week process. You can't be at 100% light until you're at, until you're at, un hydroponics. Oh, are you out front? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, give me one sec. Give me one sec. Let me, I'll be like there in like 30 seconds. All right, bye. All right, listen, it's been super fun with all of you people from all over getting high with you this morning, but you guys aren't paying me any money because you probably already bought the book. You probably already watched the show. I got a new book that just came out, 420 Guide. This one's more about smoking cannabis and this is more about for newbies. <clears throat> I've got the... I've got the no more grow more cards because literally, oh man, this is my commercial. And I totally got it. All right, I got to go. I totally got all these cards because I already know every problem you're going to have. These are my books. These are my vendors. You guys are super awesome. <laughs>